Um, I want to talk about another action, but I think we should postpone that a bit and just get on to uh, a sorry state of affairs that Mike Bolan is very good at uh, sniffing out. So, <laughs> Mike Bolan. Good to you. Fairly quickly from me, I thought you might like to, to hear the news of what's happening at the moment. You probably all realise that the mill is still not finally approved until the environmental management plan has been done. Um, that basically buys a little bit of time. As you all know, Danny O'Curie is now running in Turnbull's seat of Wentworth. What you may not know is that Gordon Craven, who was originally from here, is running a legal case against Turnbull as we speak, and he's supporting Danielle. So if you don't know Gordon, um, Gordon produced the Discover Tasmania website and Discover Tasmania's pictures of log trucks and blazing forests and everything else but it was called Discover Tasmania and the uh, government put heat on him to shut it down and tried to uh, uh, coerce him into closing and he wouldn't do it, it's still there now and he's now become interested in the pulp mill um, we're working with Gordon, he's done all the legal research and he notes that uh, Turnbull makes some mistakes in his decision and one of those mistakes is to suggest that guns is not increasing the intensity of logging in the forest. This is something that we picked up and put to the RPDC several, uh, you know, three, nine months ago or something. And uh, there's no question guns has moved from 4 million tonnes a year to 7 million tonnes a year, as that's their intention. And basically, at the same time, saying there's no intensification. The second problem was that uh, Turnbull refers to an attachment, attachment B, in uh, his determination, but there is no attachment B that anyone can find. And um, so Gordon has written to the minister and said, you know, where is attachment B? And he's written to the department, he got referred to the department, got nothing. So he said, okay, well, it's obvious to me, and this was, he's just written to Turnbull, um, that uh, there either is no attachment or there is some problem with this attachment, can you please forward it to me immediately? So Gordon's a very, very good troublemaker. He's done an excellent job in other areas. He's taken his own counsel to court and won. He took um, Reen Hitting and so forth to court, so he's done pretty well. Very determined, good man. Um, now, for those who are interested, his website um, that you can look at this on is called Sydney, that's S-Y-D-N-E-Y-Law.com. So the dash is just a hyphen. And uh, you'll get everything that Gordon's doing. He puts it all up on his website so the whole world can see it. So he's doing a fantastic job. I've been talking um, to Michael Stokes, who's a lawyer at the University of Tasmania, um, on a related matter. What we're seeing now is that now that guns and the government fancies that the mill is approved and will be built, they're picking up the pace of trying to acquire land. They need substantially more farmland, as you probably all heard. And uh, basically, they're probably going to need four to 600,000 hectares by my calculations, which is basically everything in northern Tasmania. The easiest way to get that is to get it from farmers, and the easiest way to get the farmers to move off their land is to ease them off their land, and the PAL Act seems to be doing a pretty good job of attempting to do that. The Meander Valley Council had a meeting on Tuesday, and some of our worthies here were there. And uh, basically all of the things that the uh, community put together to object to the odious uh, nature of the Act were all basically refused by the Council, regardless of the fact that there were hundreds of residents there who all wanted a result, but they were uh, comprehensively ignored. Now, we've been looking at the background behind all of this, what's really going on. The trouble with the PAL Act, apart from um, the fact that there's virtually no public consultation, it prevents rural landowners from building on their own land unless the land's worth more than a million dollars. Well, forget it. There's, you're going to find rural land that's worth more than a million bucks. You're going to be looking at vast areas. They uh, allow or want to allow aerial spraying, which allows a drift of up to 300 metres onto adjacent properties. So if you're living on a property um, that mean, and you're surrounded by plantations, that means you've got 300 metres on all sides of you in which you can expect spray drift. And that's pretty serious means you can't even grow your own veggies and expect them to be um, clean and healthy. And clearly, by doing these things, they're diminishing land values by a significant amount. And um, Rod Hutchins and Rod Sinfield, who are here tonight from the Meander Valley Action Group, have calculated that uh, the losses to Meander Valley Council alone could be worth up to $100 million. Or is it a bit more? Is that about right? $100 million? Now, this is ordinary Tasmanians who are going to be losing that $100 million. And the purpose of losing that 100 million is so we can convert it to trees. Those same Tasmanians paying taxes, 
which helps convert the land to trees. So not only are they being punished, but they're also having their money used to convert land to trees, courtesy of Mr. Howard, who hopefully won't be there much longer. Oh. Yeah. The, um, so looking at all of that, we also looked at the result of the case that John Hayward's running. Some of you will have met John. He was co-counsel at the RPDC with us. For us. Um, and basically, um, John has appealed a decision by um, whoever it was made, I can't remember now, about logging in the cast up there. The trouble with that is it's a cave system that runs underground and any um, toxins or whatever that go into the cast or mud that gets disturbed when you um, start logging activities, all of that just quickly goes to some other place and no one knows where that is. So the idea of destroying this cast, and much of it really is... Um, uh, of, of great interest to a lot of people. The idea of destroying it just for logging is um, objectionable to many. And basically, uh, there's little doubt that un if for those of you who saw Four, Corn Four Corners program about two years ago, there's a thing called the A-Team. And what the logging industry decided to do, they'd been under such pressure in the 90s from environmental groups, they decided to join environmental groups covertly, report back what they were doing and disrupt what they're doing. There's probably at least one or two loggers in this room tonight. Now, um, the issue about that is that um, they've then clearly... It's Mark Cassidy. Could the loggers please put you... So, the... Uh, what, what the loggers have also done, it would appear at the same time, they took the opportunity to penetrate many of our government and decision-making bodies so that there's a majority of loggers or a large number of loggers on these bodies, such as councils. So the loggers are being paid, they, turn, they become council members, and then they make decisions that are largely in favour of the forestry industry. The problem with that is that they have a conflict of interest. They have bias. And that bias um, basically clearly defies the principles of natural justice which form the underpinnings of much of our legal system. So in our legal system when you go to um, hurt, get hurt at a court, you don't expect the judge to be making money out of making a decision either for or against you. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's totally objectionable, totally alien to our whole way of uh, running a justice system and yet we have governments who purport to be interested in law and order who now seem to be quite happy that these conflicts of interest exist. <coughs> so the case put up on the logging in the cast area, the appeal, was to do with the fact that the judge who made the decision was a logger who had who was going to make money out of a positive decision. Oh. Who was the judge? Oh. No, I, uh, I do know, but I don't want to pass it out. So basically, he was going to make money out of making a positive decision. So John Hayward appealed that on behalf of uh, the various groups who were interested in the area. And that appeal was turned down, again with a judge sort of faking it and making up all kinds of reasons why um, this bias was actually okay. Now the problem with that is it's not okay. As soon as we start to say we have no standards, we're quite happy for judges to have a conflict of interest and I don't care if they have this conflict of interest, then basically our rule of law rapidly starts to collapse, which is what we're seeing. So we're seeing two things. We're seeing the rule of law collapsing and, and the political system collapsing as logging interests and other corporate interests start to basically um, pay for various favours from the groups. 